Welcome to part one of the 50 millimeter focal length for the SR Lounge Canon Lens War series. Now, in the 50 millimeter range, we have seven total lenses. So in this first part, we're gonna be discussing just the 50 millimeter primes. And then in part two, since we're using the same zoom setup as in the 35 millimeter focal length series, we're gonna briefly talk through the zooms and then we're gonna to go to part three where we're gonna compare our favorite zoom to our primes. For those that are new to the SR Lounge Canon Lens War series, we'll be sure to check out the teaser video where we introduce the entire series. We show you our testing methodology as well as what we're looking for in these tests. Also check out all the other videos on each focal length. This video is the 50 millimeter focal length prime lenses for which we have three prime lenses. We have the 50 millimeter 1.8, we have the 50 millimeter 1.4, and we have the 50 millimeter 1.2L. All right, so let's start from the top with their WOAs or wide open apertures. Now, once again, this is a visual test of differences, not a technical one. So we're trying to distinguish differences in appearances while viewing the images full screen on a 27 inch 3K resolution display. Okay, so how about aesthetically? How did they all look at the respective WOAs or their wide open apertures? Just how creamy and bokehlicious is our bokeh and how sharp do they remain while wide open? Well, the clear winner in this grouping, it was easy to pick out. It's the 50 millimeter 1.2 L. And of the three primes, not only did it have the most bokeh, but it also had the best aesthetic quality of the bokeh. In addition, the image quality was sharp enough when wide open to actually use. And this is kind of important because if it's not sharp enough when wide open, well, those are apertures that are actually unusable. In addition, the color and contrast was far superior to that of both the other 50s. Now in comparing the quality of the bokeh, if it weren't for the fact that the 50 millimeter 1.4 was hazy when wide open, then I would say that overall the wide open bokeh of the 1.4 is quite similar to that of the 1.2L. But again, the problem with this was that at a wide open aperture of 1.4, it was just too hazy, too dreamy, and too soft. And I would say that is not really usable, at least for my purposes, it wasn't usable when shot wide open. In addition, with both the 1.8 and the 1.4, there was something just a bit more artificial about the aesthetic of the bokeh. This was particularly noticeable when we zoom in over say the tree branch area of the image where you could see essentially the 50 millimeter 1.2. It just did a better job of rendering the bokeh in a very smooth way. In addition, you have quite a bit more bokeh as well. Now surprisingly of these three lenses, my second favorite was actually the 50 millimeter 1.8, our nifty 50. It did have a bit less bokeh at f1.8, but the image wasn't so soft that I would say it's unusable when wide open. It still was a bit soft and it did have a bit of that dreamy look, but it wasn't anything like the 50 millimeter 1.4. And if we zoom in over the model and we compare all three images from each lens, you can see exactly what I mean. Particularly if you focus on the area of the model and her dress, you can see where the 51.8 clearly does a better job than the 51.4, which is quite disappointing disappointing because the 1.4 at $400 is nearly four times as much as the Nifty 50. So you'd expect to get a quite a bit better performance, especially a wide open aperture or a usable wide open aperture. But still the 50 millimeter 1.2, the big brother of the three lenses, well, it kind of rubs both their faces into the mud. It looks clearly the best out of all three lenses, especially when wide open. Okay, so let's step up to F2 and see how they all fare in regards to their sharpness. At F2, if you zoom into the image, you can start to see the 50 millimeter 1.4 pulling away from the 1.8. It's sharper, it shows better image quality and so forth, but still the clear winner in the pack is the 50 millimeter 1.2 L, which you'd expect because it's an L lens and it's also much more expensive. But this lens was tack sharp over our subject and while the 50 millimeter always remained ahead, we noticed the differences in sharpness visually equalized around F4 and that meant that Basically up to F4, it was easy to see these differences at just a full screen size. But beyond that, we kind of started having to zoom in and pixel peep to be able to see differences in sharpness and overall image quality. All right, so let's talk about aesthetics. Now, while at a common aperture of F2, I could still distinguish the 50 millimeter 1.2 from the other lenses just by viewing it at full screen, simply because of the amount of bokeh and the aesthetic quality to the bokeh was still better. But it wasn't necessarily by a huge amount, meaning that if you were just viewing these, say, at web resolution on a website, it'd be very difficult to tell the difference. But on a 27 inch 3K display, you could tell. Now, the way I could tell this was that the bokeh on the 50 millimeter 1.2 was just a bit larger and smoother than that of the 50 mm 1.4 and the 1.8. The 50 millimeter 1.4 did have a bit more bokeh and better aesthetic quality than the 1.8, but again, it wasn't like say a night and day difference. The majority of the aesthetic differences equalized again around f4, where again we had to essentially comb through the images closely side by side on a pixel to pixel basis to be able to see these differences. Visually, at around f4 and beyond, if viewing just simply on a full screen display at say 3K resolution, it was very difficult to tell aesthetic differences between the three lenses beyond F4.
In regards to the overall contrast and color of each lens, they were all quite similar, especially once we got to around f2.8 and above. But at all apertures, they kind of performed right on par with their classes. So for example, the 50mm 1.2L, well, it was the best. It had the most vivid contrast, had the best and most accurate color rendition. The 1.4 was next, and then the 1.8 was third. But again, the differences are not huge, and contrast and color are one of those things that you can compensate for in post-production. Now this is one of those times where I do want to mention some additional things that you need to consider, and that is the feel and build quality of each of these lenses. The 1.2 L really sets the standard of these three, and it should because it is the L series lens. It has a great build, amazing quality, feels nice, has a smooth focus action, and it actually focuses very well even at wide open apertures. But the 50mm 1.8 and the 1.4, they leave quite a bit to be desired. Now I don't think most of us have a lot of expectations for the 1.8 because it's quite cheap, and at 100 bucks, it's given the name of the Nifty 50, because it's cheap, it takes great pictures and so forth, and you can expect that it's gonna feel cheap because it's only 100 bucks. It's cheap, kind of plasticky and so forth. The focus action isn't very smooth. It kind of makes funny noises too when you're focusing. And to be honest, it was actually quite difficult to nail a wide open focus shot. But all in all, it's still a great buy, especially for the money. Now the 50mm 1.4 is a bit more disappointing. And the reason why is because at four times the price of the 1.8, you don't necessarily see that price difference in its overall performance. It doesn't necessarily focus that much better. When wide open, it was just a bit too soft, and that makes the extra half stop at 1.4 compared to 1.8 very much less usable because if you can't shoot wide open, it's simply too soft, then you kind of have to step it to 1.8 anyway. And basically at around f1.8 or f2, there really isn't much aesthetic difference between the appearance of the overall bokeh and so forth in the 1.4 versus the 1.8. Still, it also kind of feels cheap. And unlike the 35 millimeter f2, which we showed you earlier, this lens feels really cheap to the touch. It's very plasticky. It's not as cheap as, say, it doesn't feel as cheap as the Nifty 50, but still for 400 bucks, you'd expect a bit more, especially since we see that in the 35 millimeter and the 35 millimeter IS. In addition, it was also quite difficult to get the camera to focus where I wanted, particularly when wide open at 1.4, which I don't know if you'd do anyway. And that was something we expected to deal with with the 1.8, but something we expected to be fixed with the 1.4. So here's the final conclusion between these three lenses. Now I would say if you're just starting out and if you want a 50 millimeter lens, which is an amazing lens to have, I'd recommend that everybody has one, get the 50 millimeter 1.8 at hundred bucks. Okay, so the Nifty 50 at hundred bucks is far less expensive than any of the other ones and it's gonna be about 95% of the lens that the 50 millimeter 1.4 is. And really you don't want the 50 millimeter at 1.4 anyway because it's just too soft. So the 50 millimeter 1.8 is gonna be the best bang for your buck by far, okay? Everybody should have this when starting out for sure. Next, when you want a better 50 millimeter, say for extreme low light, for ultra shallow depth of field, and for shots that you wouldn't be able to get otherwise, then save your money and just jump straight to the 50 millimeter 1.2L. I know it's a lot more expensive, but I'd recommend skipping the 1.4 entirely just because at 400 bucks, you're not necessarily getting that much better performance than the 1.8. Now this lens is around 1600 bucks, so it is a lot more expensive. It's about 16, 15, 16 times the cost of the 1.8. But at least it does a lot more as well. It's actually sharp and usable when it's wide open. It can get down almost a full stop wider than the 1.8 and it gives you more creamy bokeh and so forth. Just all around it's better and it's gonna give you the best overall results in the 50 millimeter prime focal range. And you're gonna see more of what we're talking about as we continue through and finish the 50 millimeter focal length in this series. So I hope you all enjoyed part one, the 50 millimeter prime focal length in the SR Lounge Can Lens War series. And be sure to check out the actual article on srlounge.com by simply clicking the link in the description below the video for more example images, more information on each lens, as well as links on where to purchase. My name is Pi and I'll see you all in the next video.